Anne Bonney was born around the year 1697 in Kinsale, country Cork in Ireland. Her father was William Cormac, a prominent lawyer, and her mother was Cormac's servant, a woman called Mary Brennan. Cormac's wife made his infidelity publicly known. With his reputation on the floor, he was forced to leave Ireland and start a new life. Cormac, along with his maid, Mary, and his daughter Annie, settled in the province of Carolina, now South Carolina. Cormac was an intelligent man, and used his knowledge of the law to restart his legal career. In Charlestown, Carmack did very well for himself, buying and selling goods, on top of his legal work, allowing him to buy a plantation. Because his business as a merchant was going so well, he decided to focus solely on trading, and amassed a large fortune. Anne Bonny's mother died when she was around age 12. This left her to take care of the household and coordinate staff. From a young age, she was often alone, as her father was absent or busy at work. Her teenage years have been recorded as very peculiar, with various stories surrounding this part of her life. One story tells us of a servant girl that was stabbed and killed by Bonnie for an unknown reason. Another mentions a young man that tried to sexually assault her, and in retaliation, she injured him, putting him in the hospital for several weeks. When she was 16 years old, she met and fell in love with James Bonney. James was a small-time pirate, with no real interest in Anne, but saw a comfortable life ahead if he could inherit her father's estate. Cormac was strongly against the relationship, wishing to make Anne into an educated, respectable woman, a true upper-class lady. Despite Cormac's request and threats to leave James, Anne refused and went on to marry him. Cormac was distraught and was left with no choice. Being a man of his word, he forced Anne to leave the house, never to return. Evidently, Anne was extremely upset and furious. She decided to burn the father's plantation, trying to take vengeance for how he had treated her. Anne began living with her husband, and soon after, he took her to Nassau in New Province, an island that was renowned for being a pirate sanctuary. James had very little success as a pirate. He struggled to make any money and couldn't support his wife. In the end, he gave up his life as a pirate and turned on his fellow companions, becoming a pirate informer for Woods Rogers, the royal governor of the Bahamas. Anne disliked his new line of work. She saw him as a traitor, and by this point, she had made many pirate friends from taverns all across the land. James' work led to the arrest, trial, and execution of a handful of pirates in the area within a short time. This upset Anne, as she was planning to leave him. It was in a tavern that Anne met Calico Jack Rackham. They became good friends, and soon after, lovers. Calico Jack was so in love with Anne, that he even offered James money, so that he would divorce her. Evidently, he refused. However, this didn't stop Calico Jack, as soon after, he ran away with Annie making off the island in the middle of the night. Calico Jack was your average pirate captain. 
He made his money by attacking small vessels that were shipping goods near to the shore. His lifestyle earned him a decent sum of cash, but it never lasted, as he was a heavy spender. Buying fancy clothes and jewellery, as well as top quality liqueurs. Anne's time on the ship is surrounded by some mystery. Some sources claim that on the ship she had to disguise herself as a man, with no one except Calico Jack knowing that she was actually a woman. However, other sources state that she was accepted as a female crew member, with the whole crew referring to her as the captain's woman. It's probable that on board, she dressed as a woman, with the crew knowing her true identity. But when it was time to fight, she dressed and acted like a man. It wasn't before long that Anne became pregnant and was about to give birth. The crew stopped in Cuba, and Anne went inland to give birth to her first child. Following the birth, no one actually knew what happened to the baby. It is possible that it died at childbirth, or that it was abandoned. Others prefer to believe that Calico Jack left the newborn to be raised by family that he had on the island. Anne rejoined Calico Jack, and they carried on their life as pirates, capturing various ships and stealing the treasures they had on board and trying to become rich. During this time, another female pirate joined the crew, the renowned Mary Reed. She became good friends with Anne, and they had a very special relationship. Some of the crew even went as far as to state that they had an intimate, romantic relationship. Anne and Reed were competent pirates, and they fought side by side with all the men in their crew. Their names became known around the Caribbean for being fierce women that fighted like men. In October 1720, the crew had successfully captured and recovered lots of treasure and goods from a Spanish commercial ship. To celebrate, the crew anchored the ship and began to sing and dance, drinking late into the night. In the early hours of the morning, the crew was attacked by Captain Barnett, commanding a king's ship. The pirates were too drunk to fight. Anne and Mary tried to hold them off for a while, but their resistance was futile, and soon the whole crew was in chains and taken to Port Royal in Jamaica to stand trial. The whole crew was tried and found guilty for the crime of piracy. The crew was sentenced to death by hanging, and not long after they were executed. The women were also convicted. However, they managed to save themselves by claiming to be pregnant. The English common law states that a pregnant woman must receive a stay of execution until she gives birth. Both women were indeed pregnant and were allowed to stay alive. It wasn't before long though, until Mary Reed got ill and ended up dying from fever whilst in prison. Anne stayed in prison until she gave birth, but what happened next is completely unknown. There is no record to date that tells us of her execution, release or escape. So what exactly happened to Anne Bonny? Most of the information that exists regarding this part of her life is mere speculation, as after 1720, there's no records of Anne Bonny's life. A book published in 1724 by Charles Johnson, called A General History of the Robberies and Murders of Most Notorious Pirates, stated that she continued in prison to the time of her lying in, and afterwards, reprieved from time to time. But what has become of her since? We cannot tell. Only this we know, that she was not executed. However, the validity of the book is somewhat questionable. This is why some believe she simply died in prison, 
or even that she somehow managed to escape and went back to her old life as a pirate. Some sources claim that her father Cormac paid the ransom and brought back to Charlestown. They go on to claim that Annie remarried in 1721 and went on to have eight children, eventually dying in 1782 in South Carolina. Thank you everyone for watching this episode on Anne Bonny. If you enjoyed the video, please like, and if you're new, subscribe. For all of those of you who are wondering why Forgotten Lives was not narrating this video, it is because he is recovering from a minor mouth surgery. So I thought I'd help him out. Let me know in the comments how you actually think Anne's life ended. And we'll see you in the next Forgotten Life.